guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to create a simple GraphQL API for a blog app using Actix and Juniper. I won't be starting from scratch though. I created an app with the basic data model and a database connection. If you want to learn how to create this, make sure to watch my simple to do service with Actix video series. The link is in the description. Here's a little demo of what we are going to do. I deployed this app to Heroku, so you can play a bit with it if you want. It includes Graphical, an IDE for GraphQL. For instance, if I want to query the users and get the ID and username, I just need to write exactly that, hit play, and get the result. If I want to see the user schema, I can use this documentation explorer, search for the user, and here I can see all the fields it has. I just need to add them to the query, and that is exactly what I get as a result. So let's clone this repository. The link for the repo is also in the description. Make sure to check it out. Let's copy the URL, go to the terminal, to my Rust folder, and clone the project. I created some tags in case you want to follow along. The tag part1 has the complete code for this video, and the starter has the code to follow along. Let's check out what started and create a new branch to work on it. Let's start with the project structure. Here we have the migration folder. It contains, as you may guess, the database migration created by the diesel CLI. I will be using a Postgres database. So far, I have three simple tables, users, posts, and comments. The users have an ID of type UUID and that will be generated in the database using the function UUID generate v4. This method is provided by this UUID extension, which I also included here. The users also have a unique username and email, a password, a bio description, a profile image, and the create add and update add fields with the current timestamp as default. The post table also have the ID as an UUID, the author ID with a foreign key to the user's table, a slug that is like a user-friendly URL for the post. This is also unique. Then the title, description and body, and the timestamp fields. The comment table have the UID too, the author and the post as foreign keys, and the body of the actual comment. Now, in the source directory, we have the main file. In here I define the other included modules config, handlers, models, and error. In the main function, I get the configuration from the environment variables and create my connection pool. Then, we have the HTTP server with our app instance in a factory closure. It has a middleware for the logger, a copy of the pool of the app data, and then I have configure that allow me to have the configuration of the resources in a different module. In this case, the configuration comes from the app config method. We can also see a module with the integration tests is included, but in a different file in the source directory. The app config method is defined in the handlers module. It's just a folder with a mod file in it. In here, I have defined the handler to have a simple health endpoint that just returns status 200. This app config method receives a mutable service config as a parameter, which I can then use to define the services. In here, I define a resource in the root path with a route for the get request using the hell handler. In the models module, I have this mod file that exposes the comment, post, and user submodules. In user, I have the user struct. We can see the same fields as our user's table. For the ID, I'm using the UUID library, the bio and profile image are optional values, and the timestamps are defined as a naive datetime from the chrono library. For the struct, I derive the code for clone, serialize, deserialize, and the Postgres mapper, and specify the database table for the users. It is the same thing for the post and common structs. Then, I have the config module where I define my config struct with the server and database configuration. Here, I also have a couple of util methods. To get the configuration from the environment, we'll first load the .m file content to the environment. 
Then it will configure the logs using a slug scope to set a global logger and slug std log to replace the standard logger. And lastly, I have the method to create a connection pool. Then on the errors module, I have my app error struck with the user facing message, the cause of the error, and the error type. So far, the error types I define are the DB error and the not found error. As dependencies, I have both the UUID and Chrono library with the certain feature include, and also Tokyo Postgres with Chrono and UUID features. Great! Let's start with the GraphQL library Juniper. Juniper provides some building blocks to write GraphQL services. It has good integration with Hyper, Iron, Rocket, and Warp frameworks but only a basic example using Actix, so let's give it a try. I will use the git repository for Juniper in the dependencies. At this moment, the master branch is fully compatible with all the libraries that I am currently using, including the UUID and Chrono library. It also requires the latest version of the futures library, so I will add that too. Great! Now, the first thing I need to do is to define the GraphQL schema. Let's start with the user struct. I will import from Juniper the GraphQL object and we will use this to derive it from the struct. Then, one more thing, we don't want to expose the password of the user, so I will use this macro to skip the field and that's all I need to do for this struct. Now, we need to define our GraphQL endpoint, so let's create a GraphQL submodule in the handlers. First. I need to have access to my connection pool. For that, I will need to create a context struct that will hold the reference of the pool. I will use an arc for the reference. I also want to derive the code for clone. Let's specify GraphQL submodule in the mod file and also import arc from the standard library in the connection pool. After defining the context, I also need to implement the Juniper context trait for the struct to mark it as a valid context for Juniper. Now, we need to define the query and the mutations for the GraphQL schema. So let's first create a query struct and implement it. We'll use the Juniper GraphQL object macro and specify the context struct as a context type. Query is just another GraphQL object. Any method implemented here will be available in our GraphQL API. For example, Let's define an API version. This is just an async function that will return 1.0 and the result type of the function is just the string reference. Now, let's define the type schema. For that, we'll need to import from Juniper root node. This type combines the query and the mutation objects of our schema. Since we don't have a mutation object yet, we can use the empty mutation struct. This is usually used for read-only APIs, so our schema type would be the root node with the static scope, our query struct, and the empty mutation. As we did with the query, we also need the context type here. Now, let's create a public function to create a schema. Call schema new with an instance of the query and an instance of the empty mutation with the context type. And that's it for the GraphQL module. Now let's go to the handler's mod file and let's first enable the graphical IDE. We'll need to create an async function for the graphical handler and this will return an HTTP response. The IDE is just an HTML page. So let's define a variable and import the graphical function from Juniper. HTTP, graphical, and graphical source. The GraphQL endpoint is usually a slash GraphQL, so let's use that. Then we need to create an HTTP response OK with the context type text HTML and as the body the HTML content. Cool. Now we can define a new service with the resource slash graphical. The route will be a GET request with the handler which is created. Great. Now let's also create the handler for our GraphQL endpoint. For the endpoint, we can either use a get request with a query string or a post request with a JSON body. I prefer the post request. So we need to extract the JSON data from the request using the web JSON extractor. 
In this case, the JSON type is GraphQL request, so let's import that and use it as the type in the extractor. We also need the schema in the context, so let's import them from our GraphQL submodule. Create schema, schema and context. Let's create the schema instance in the app config, then we can add that as an application data. That way we can get the schema using the data extractor. Finally, we will need our connection pool from the context, so let's import that and format our code a bit. First, we need a reference to the connection pool, so let's import arc from the standard library and use it and use pool into inner to get the reference from the data extractor. Now, for the context, we need a new instance with the pool in it. Next, to create the response, we can call data.execute and pass the reference to the schema in the context. Then, we create an HTTP response OK that will return this response object as a JSON. And that's all for the GraphQL handler. Now, let's add another service for the GraphQL endpoint. It will be almost the same, but a slash GraphQL and a post request. Great! Now we can save and run cargo build. But before we can run the server, let's start our Postgres database with Docker Compose. Then we need to run these on migrations. And finally, copy the example.end file. Now we can run the server. Let's open the browser and see how that looks. Localhost 8080 slash graphical. And we can see the GraphQL IDE. If we use the play button, we got an error response since we don't have a query. So let's query for the API version function that we created. Good, we got 1.0 as a response. We can set a name to the query like this and call it version. Hit play and got the same result. Cool. Now let's go to the GraphQL module to create another query for the user. This time we want to get them from the database. So let's create another async function inside the query implementation. Let's call it users and this will return a vector of users for now. So let's import the user model and in here we can access the context by specifying the context reference as a parameter. But since we are dealing with the database, we need to have some kind of error handling. So let's import field error from Juniper. Context should be capital C, so let's fix that. And the return type will be a result with the user vector on success and a field error in case of failure. Okay, first we need to get the database client from the pool, so let's import that. We get the pool from the context and call get and await and the question mark operator. After that, we need to create a prepare statement, so called client.prepare. We pass the query, just a select star for now, we can fix that later, call await and the question mark. Finally, we get the users from the query result, so call client.query, pass the reference to the statement with empty parameters, call await with question mark again. Then we get an iterator from the rows and we need to convert the rows to the user struct. So we import from Tokyo PG Mapper the from Tokyo Postgres row trait. And inside the map closure, we can call from row ref and pass the row. Then we call collect and transform it into a result of the type we want. Then the question mark operator. And finally, we return the users wrap in OK. I forgot to open the diamond operator here, so I'll fix that. Cool, we save and run the server again. And we can try our new attributes in the IDE. Let's create another query for the users and try to get the list of users with only the IDs. We can see we don't have any users yet, so let's add some in the database. Insert into users, username, email, password, values, user1, user1 at example.com, and password. Now let's try the query again, and we got the result. Let's try to specify more fields, and it works, perfect. And that will be all for this video. In the next video, I will add a mutation to create and update the users. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. It will encourage me to create more and better content. Thanks for watching.